So as we mentioned, two huge marches that happened in D.C. over the weekend. And despite the very frigid weather, that didn't stop people from coming out. An estimated 30,000 people gathered yesterday to protest against vaccine mandates. Joining us now to weigh in on this and the future of the Republican Party is Democratic strategist Ken Altshuler and Republican and CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Thank you both for sticking around. Uh, cold not keeping these people away. That's how adamant they are about it. Uh, Melissa, what did you think when you saw that? I mean, obviously, I don't think it matters whether you're a Democrat or Republican. I think everybody is ready for COVID to be over with. Uh, yet you still have the head of the World Health Organization saying not quite yet that more variants could come out. Uh, but what do you think? I mean, the Supreme Court made a ruling recently, kind of a split decision, if you will, still keeping that mandate in place, though, for federal workers, but not for private entities. What are your thoughts? Well, the problem is the private entities, despite the Supreme Court's ruling, have still decided to put in place their own ruling where they have to be vaccinated in order to enter their business or to work for the companies. That's problematic. It is problematic for the economy overall, and it's very problematic for a city like New York City that has been nearly destroyed by COVID. We're never going to get back to normal here in New York City until they end all mandates. That includes mask mandates. That includes vaccine mandates. Whether COVID's done or not, or whether we have any more variants, no one knows. Absolutely no one knows. But all of these governors, they're like kings now. They've all we have, they've declared emergency rule for we're going on two years. It's going to be two years in March of 2022. When does it end? It's never gonna end until somebody decides that they're not gonna listen to the governors anymore, or a new leadership takes hold. For New York City, the only savior that we have at this point since the new mayor, Eric Adams, has decided to keep the mandates is if we, if, if actually Lee Zeldin wins in November of 2022 and we have a Republican governor, he's going to end the mandates. And if you go, again, we're discussing Florida. Florida's free. People can live. They can go to businesses. They can eat in restaurants. They don't have to show their ID and a vaccine card. And you know what? In New York City, not only do you have to show that you had the vaccine, you actually have to show that you have two shots. You have to show that you have two shots. This is completely insane and ridiculous. Ken, obviously, uh, Melissa is very passionate about it, but she's staying in the Big Apple. I can't say that. I think there's an estimated 2,000 people that are coming to the state of Florida a day. I can tell you we're definitely feeling the effects when we go on the road. And when it comes to rent prices, those have gone up tremendously, as well as just buying a home. There's a shortage here, as there is all across the country, but especially here. Do you, do you see things changing at all? Well, first, I have to laugh when I saw the, uh, the anti-mandate rally and a woman was holding a sign, my body, my choice. And I didn't know if I was watching the pro-life rally or the anti-mandate rally because it's the same sign in both rallies. That being said, look, the private uh, private businesses can impose whatever they want to. That's America. And even consumers should believe that. And most statistics show that when an employer mandates a, ma a vaccination, the majority of workers get vaccinated. So it, the, the, man, the mandates really induce vaccination. Now, I think that I think the Supreme Court was right that the uh, government cannot, cannot impose that on a private business, can impose it upon federal employees. But, you know, you know, Miranda, I said I'm not a big fan of, of mandates. I, I'm a big fan of vaccinations. I think the vaccination works. I think more people should get them. But I don't like forcing people to get mandates, even though let's not forget uh, the, the um, military requires 16 vaccinations to be in the military. So we've always had vaccinations. We've always had mandates. I do think it's had a very bad effect on the economy. Certainly New York City has been suffering and I'm not sure a vaccination card makes much sense. You know, I remember they used to have forged IDs all the time. How hard is it to have a forged uh, vaccination card? I think it's a silly requirement, I really do. Well, they've already had some and will of course continue to follow the story because it's not going anywhere. Uh, but I do want to get to this. So we were talking about de Democrats uh, right before the break. Let's talk about Republicans and shift gears a little bit. So Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney giving former Republican Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich uh, basically uh, a side eye uh, after his remarks that happened over the weekend, suggesting that members of the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th riot at the Capitol could face 
jail time if the Republican Party, he says, regains control of the House and Senate after the 2022 midterms. In case you missed it, here's what he had to say. Uh, you're going to have a Republican majority in the House and a Republican majority in the Senate. And all these people who've been so tough and so mean and so nasty are going to be delivered subpoenas for every document, every conversation, every tweet, every email, uh, because I think it's clear that this, these are people who are literally just running over the law, pursuing innocent people, causing them to spend thousands and thousands of dollars in legal fees for no justification. And it's basically a lynch mob. And unfortunately, the Attorney General of the United States has joined that lynch mob and is totally misusing the FBI. And I think when you have a Republican Congress, this is all going to come crashing down and the wolves are going to find out that they're now sheep. And they're the ones who are, in fact, going to, I think, face a real risk of jail uh, for the kind of laws they're breaking. Some pretty harsh words and dire criticism. In response, though, Cheney, who serves as the committee's vice chair, tweeted this. A former Speaker of the House is threatening jail time for members of Congress who are investigating the violent January 6th attack on our Capitol and our Constitution. This is what it looks like when the rule of law unravels. So both kind of accusing the other of the same thing. Uh, Ken, you're an attorney, so I, I want to start with you. Uh, what do you think about that? Jail time? Well, I scratch my head. I'm thinking, what possible crime did the committee commit in performing their duties as an investigative body? So, look, Newt Gingrich is uh, about two and a half decades too late. Liz Cheney, you know, accusing Liz Cheney of being a rhino, if you look at her voting record, she's almost 90 to 95 percent Republican voting. It's incredible. And she probably won't get reelected in her own state because of this. But no, Newt Gingrich is wrong. Liz Cheney is correct. And it's, I'm not sure why he even said it. I don't know what he's talking about. I know of no law they violated. And I think that to suggest that when the Senate and the House become Republican, and the Senate's going to be a toss-up. I'm not so sure it's going to be Republican. But even when the House gets to be Republican in November, which they will, they will stop any investigation if it's not over by then. So the Democrats have to finish this investigation well in advance of November. But the House committee has no risk of being put in jail I don't know what he's talking about. I don't think he knows what he's talking about either. Melissa, do Melissa, you know what he's talking about? I have absolutely no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> but I do agree <laughs> with Ted. I don't think Liz Cheney's going to get reelected either because absolutely no one in the Republican Party cares what Liz Cheney thinks. So I don't think she's going to get reelected. And again, if the election were held tomorrow, there will be a sweep. So, I mean, as far as what Ken and I think about that, I think if the economy continues to falter and interest rates go up and we have these high levels of inflation, there's no chance in hell that the Democrat Party is going to hold on to the House or Senate. And as far as I'm concerned, it's going to look really bad for Biden going into two years. If it's fast forward 12 months from now into the beginning of 2023, if things have not gotten better. One of the problems is that Jay Powell is wanting to increase interest rates because he thinks that's going to prevent inflation. That's not the reason we're in this inflation period. One of the reasons we're in this inflation period is because we don't have enough people back to work. Now, you can say and argue that you don't think it's because of the mandates. I happen to do think it's because of the mandates. And it's also because of COVID, because the media has scared people to death about COVID, whether it's this variant, the next one, that if they go into work and they're around people, that they're going to die. So people want to work from home and they're not working to the same capacity. And so I think all of this is a problem. I have no idea why Newt Gingrich said that. Again, I don't want to say he's irrelevant right now as far as the party concerns, because he's a public speaker and he, I think he's a, he's a contributor for Fox News. But the reality is, I don't know what law he's talking about that they would be breaking. I would love to know what our viewers think. Uh, maybe you do know what he's talking about. If you do, we'd love to hear from you. You can always weigh in by finding me at Real Miranda Khan, hashtag share your voice. Panel, I'm going to ask you to stick around. We're going to extend it today because there are a couple topics I want to get to. Uh, an interesting article that I found on The Hill kind of asked, begging the question, is it McConnell versus Trump? Um, as we head into the midterms. I would love to get our panel to react to that. Also, we've been covering that UPenn swimmer who identifies as being transgender, competing with uh, other women, breaking another record now. We're gonna share the details and get our panel to react when we return.